All right, so I've been asked several times to take a look at Tom Hiddleston, and this is a person that, at a glance, they don't actually look that strange. They don't look that suspicious just at a glance. But for me, I know that when I look in this person's eyes, I've always felt a lot of feminine energy. And so looking at this person, I feel very confident they're female. And so I've looked carefully to find uh, photos that reveal this person's body for the gender it is. And I'm going to show you. Now this person does have a long brow, a very long brow. This is more common on males. The lips are small, but they do appear basically equal. Some Caucasian women have very small lips, so that's not too strange. The eyes are either neither close set nor wide set, they're just, you know, proportionate. And the face, the general facial structure, is quite elongated and oval. There also is a bit of a strength to the jaw and fairly large ears. The hands look fairly large. A lot of times FTMs will have fairly large hands and they will often get kind of veinier and uh, look just a little bit more masculine. Sometimes they don't, but um, it does seem like there may be a female digit ratio here. I'm not sure. And honestly, I don't place that much stock in digit ratios because that may be one of the things that um, changing hormone levels as a young child can change anyhow. And I do see people with it um, not matching on their own hands and people who don't match their typical gender one. So did your ratio is not the best measure, I will say. So this is Tom as a baby. See what you can see. And Tom as what looks very much like a little girl to me. Just this essential energy. Something is very feminine. And you know, sometimes uh, teenage boys will have some baby fat, but this just... This looks a little bit too much. This looks um, like a girl's face, kind of softer, but um, you know, there's some strength to it. Either genetically because of his bloodline, or through changes caused by testosterone. So here, this, this just looks very, very feminine. The eyes do look actually close set here. The nose is quite small. The face looks to be oval shaped. There is a bit of strength to the jaw, but actually this kind of facial structure I could see on a female. Looks like the face has grown a bit more masculine with age on this one, but um, the energy again is female. Don't see anything in the neck. Um, there's no widow's peak. Not all women do have a widow's peak and some men do. Now we can see some more of the Adam's apple. If taken at a young enough age and over a period of time, testosterone can actually develop pretty convincing Adam's apples on some people. Um, on some, it doesn't really do much. And uh, there are implants that can be done to create the illusion of having an Adam's apple. Again, this face is not strikingly masculine. There is some softness to it. The lips, again, about equal in size, though very small. There are prominent cheekbones, yes. There is a strong jaw, yes. Chin is strong. Fair gap between the nose and the mouth. Mouth actually appears fairly wide in this shot. There may be a minor brow ridge, which is not uncommon on Caucasian females. But essentially, this face, if we were to just look at this face and uh, to ignore the energy in the eyes, I don't think a lot of people would assume this is an FTM transgender. <laughs> Camp. That's interesting. Um, well, the face, again, looks pretty soft, and uh, the person is just uh, quite lean looking. And But you know, typically on males that are lean, they look a little bit kind of wirier, more sinewy, but this person just looks very delicate. There's something kind of uh, soft and willowy about this person, rather than what thin males look like. Again, just this energy, you can't get past this. This is absolutely female energy. Fairly wide mouth again. You know, long brow. There is a bit of brow ridge. There is some strength in the jaw. There is an Adam's apple. All of these things, if you just look at this person here and ignore their energy, 
this kind of person is the type that fools some people, but, um, and you know, with, with more age, even more so, but still, there is just this, this gentle glow, this sparkle that is a female energy. Shoulders do appear to slope. You may be able to fit three head sizes on these shoulders as well, but um, I believe he's around six foot tall, and women who are that height will tend to have wider shoulders in keeping with their height, so their frame kind of matches, you know? People will have proportions that match their body, so again, you might not find this too strange. Just at a glance, just looking here, there is even a sloping brow, a brow ridge, like, all the features look quite strong. This one is on the head. It's not too obvious. Looks like the digit ratio is male here, so, you know. I've seen a lot of FTMs with the male digit ratio. And I've seen some natural women with it, too. Now, notice here how the body looks kind of like there's tilting going on to push uh, the legs and everything here, the pelvis forward. Looks like they're standing and it, it just looks a bit awkward, like they're kind of leaning. Once you see people that um, are standing in poses where they don't just look quite straight, then you've got to look a little bit closer and see exactly how they may be trying to change their body. Again, he's doing that. Seems like leaning backwards with the upper body pushing this part, the pelvis, forward, and, I mean, there's a whole tilt to the legs, everything. You see some FDMs doing this because it's to counter the appearance of their spinal arch. Different women have different degrees of spinal arches, but, um, when you see a lot of FDMs, they tend to do this. They pose pushing the pelvis forward, they lean the back backward, and it makes it look fairly straight. Again, this person's hands are fairly big. They look quite masculine here. The feet look big too. But check this out. This toe is pointing this direction. It's pointing outward. And as I've pointed out in several FDM videos, they can do this to change the appearance of the Q angle. So let's see what it looks like from the front too, later. For now, Look, when, when he's not pushing the pelvis forward, look at this. The back comes inward, you can tell, at a high point. It's thinner right here, and then it comes back outward. And with some FTMs, it can be hard to tell about the pelvic tilt at the front sometimes, because they either stuff something in their trousers or they've had those procedures done. So it's, you know, it's tough to measure in some clothing, but yes, we'll keep looking. Okay, so this photo up top. This one you might not think is strange. It looks like the shoulders are wider, it looks like the pelvis is smaller than the shoulders, it looks like the legs are fairly straight, but look, look, the foot is being angled far outward, the knee too. And if we look here and see how much width there actually is in the pelvis compared to the shoulders, ignoring the shoulder pads, it looks like it's about equal, actually. And we can see there is curve on the leg here and curve here and the widest point appears to be just below the crotch. So there is curve on these legs. The person is angling the toes outward. They know the walk. Now, some females don't have extremely wide hips, and these are females who end up usually having to have uh, C-sections because their pelvis isn't wide enough to give birth. There are females who are born this way, and I think a female from a bloodline like that would make a more convincing FTM. The thing is, they're still gonna have the right cue angle, and their pelvis and shoulders are still going to be basically equal. This person's shoulders may be a little bit wider than their pelvis, but we can see there is a lot of curve on these thighs, and it begins low, just out or below the crotch, like on a female. Again, just look at this person. Don't they just exude female energy? There is something not right here. And look here. Curve on the legs. Even standing with the legs far apart, which will interfere with our ability to analyze the cue angle, we can still see there's a lot of curve on the thighs. It looks like the curve, the widest point is just below the crotch. These are not male legs. And look at that. Curvy thighs, 
soft-looking knees. On a lean man, with muscle, typically the knees are a lot bonier than this. The collarbones appear to kind of curve. Delicate, shoulders are sloping. These aren't extremely big uh, traps, so... You know, it's not just that he's a man with straight, square shoulders with built-up traps, it's that... He's got female skeletal slope to these shoulders. Something strange about the chest, the upper torso. Just a little bit strange somehow. We notice there is that waist indentation point on both sides, above the navel. And these obliques are just really, really strange. They stick out farther than you see on men. The torso is too wide, it's because there is actual female hip structure in this person. And uh, past the obliques, the hips continue to expand. Both sides, this person has curvy female hips. Curve on the legs, this person is not male. Again, just this face, this energy, this is a girl. This is absolutely female. We can see again, even from above, the waist indentation, then how it widens out, and everything down here just looks very wide, whereas the chest looks small. A male from above should look bigger up top and not as curvy down low, it's a bit strange. Again, a lot of uh, width here. The knees look a bit bonier here, you know, it's not that strange. But also here, in the shoulders, shoulder joints do appear to be equal to where we've got the hips. And, you know, the widest point is lower still, so something strange going on here. And this person is probably uh, tougher than a lot of FTMs because they're a fa fairly uh, lean, straight kind of body type. Some FTMs are really curvy girls, but I think this one is naturally not so much. Again though, waist indentation, curve of the hips. Now in this shot, again, because the, the shoulders look pretty wide, you know, you might not think anything strange if you just saw this photo. But then you find other ones. Weird looking chest. It's very kind of weak and uh, delicate looking. You know, the upper body, the upper torso, small. Definite waist above the navel. And then, most importantly, it continues outward past that point. And yes, this person has an Adonis belt. A lot of FTMs have this, and they can put it on maybe through liposculpture, maybe through implanting techniques. They have a lot of procedures that they do, and we can't ever really tell what they have done. Look at this lighting, which is covering a lot of the hips, so... You know, with this shot also, it's very deceptive. You can't really tell that this person's hips are about equal to their shoulders. In this shot, it looks, because of everything they're holding, because of the lighting, it looks like they're narrower. But look at this. The upper body comes in, it cuts in where the ribcage is, and there is muscle built here. But there is a tilt. At the front of the body there's a tilt, at the back there is a tilt. On some FTMs they build up this muscle, the fat on their body fills in their midsection, and the spinal arch is not as obvious on some of these people. But it's there. You can see that pelvic tilt. This person... this person is not male. Look how small this upper body looks in comparison to down here, it just expands. After the upper body, it expands and we have all this width down here. All this mass, this is female. Low center of gravity because all the mass is down here. And look, again, the upper body, the ribcage, it looks much smaller than down here at the hips. Everything's really big around this section. And there is definite curve on these thighs, the thigh bones are curved. Again, curvy thighs, this person has built up muscle, you know this person is a pretty lean, fit looking individual, but again, look at this too, the gradual curve here. On males, they tend to have more of a, a thin section just at the ankle, because they have lower levels of subcutaneous body fat, but on this person, we may be seeing that even though they have muscle built up all around here and everywhere, that they may also have a female subcutaneous fat level because they're female. 
again, just that curve, the, the width of these hips. And again, look at what the knee and the ankle and the foot are doing. Everything is pointing outward. Check out the curve of these hips. The waist points above the navel. The hips are wide. And look in the shoulders. Spine those shoulder joints and bring them down. They match up to the pelvis. This person does have shoulders and pelvis that are equal, or maybe shoulders just a little wider. You know, when they don't have female uh, fat distribution because of the estrogen, the estrogen doesn't make them build up fat around this part, like on females that are not being transgendered, then, you know, at a glance, you may not be able to tell that the bones are the same because they build up muscle and they don't build up the same level of fat here. So some FDMs, the lean ones, they can be tricky. Also look, angling in the arm at the elbow, another FDM trick. Here, both feet are pointing outward, both knees are pointing outward. They're walking down the stairs. If you see a photo like this, again, you might not think anything strange. It looks like it's a very long, lean person. But look at the width of that pelvis, how it matches the shoulders here. The hands actually look fairly small here. They seem to look different in different photos, so... And uh, look, look at this. The Again, the knee is angling outward, the foot is angling outward. But look, you can follow that there's curve on these legs. And here, the widest point is just at or below the crotch, like on a female. And it's definitely an acute Q angle. You can see the curve on the inner side of the thigh, on the outside. All the mass is just down low. Again, gradual curves, even though the person is lean. Again, what's the knee doing? What's the foot doing? Pointing way outward. The whole leg is being angled outward and they're kind of shifting the hip more to this side. This is the FTM walk where they kind of skate and step around to change the appearance of the Q angle. Again, knee, foot pointing outward. And we can still see here though, can still see that there is an acute cure angle. And again, definitely female legs here. This person has a lot of deceptive photos and um, outfits that they wear, but you can see the width of the hips, the angle on the thighs, the way the toes are continually pointed outward. This is not a male. Actually, here, in some shots, the shoulders also don't look as wide as in others. But they do look, you know, they do look accurate for a woman who's about six foot tall. And just some FTMs have different bodies, like I already covered uh, Chris. And, you know, this one has... The legs are a bit shorter on Chris, uh, proportionally, and the Q angle is also very obvious. This person, because they're more lean, they don't seem to be quite as curvy at a skeletal level. They may be a little trickier, but check out over here. Both of them have that awkward kind of FTM tilt when they're just standing there. This is because of the pelvic tilt. That means that the hindquarters on a female stick out a little bit farther. The whole body is curved with a spine that is arched. So that uh, on a male, typically their body would just be kind of straight down and the the backside wouldn't be out like this, but here we can see curving and arching. Again, you know, loose clothing, but there's this tilt to the body because there is a spinal arch, a female skeleton. This person is pretty uh, leggy, seems to have quite long legs. Yeah, pretty long legs. Shoulders looking quite weak and sloped here. Looks like there is the back cutting into a high point where we have that female waist. And look at that. That is a female spinal arch, absolutely. Curves inward at a high point, curves outward. Tilt to the body, this is a girl. Look here too, because of the gap in just between his arm and his body, we can see there is that curving spine. Ribcage looks pretty short, chest looks really unusual, this doesn't look right for a male. 
kind of weak and kind of stuck on the front, potentially this person could have pectoral implants. Look at the curving abdomen, that's a pelvic tilt. Smoother elbow, typically males have more pointy ones. Again, the torso looks pretty short, the legs look long. There's a lot of uh, curve, this looks correct for a female. There's curve high up on the body when they step, and then also the lowest point is below the crotch. You can tell this person has a female Q angle. Even though, see, they're also pointing the toe of the shoe out to the side here. Seems a lot of FTMs actually know this trick, so it's interesting to look at them doing this. Look at that kind of small ribcage. This person just looks delicate. The back is not really big and hunching, it's a small upper torso. You know, then it curves inward, curves outward, short torso. Hands don't look really big here. There is a taper at the wrist. Female energy, smaller upper torso. Obvious point where the waist narrows and then the hips expand and they are wide all the way down here. The mass of the person is all down low, not up high. Again, high waist and the wide hips. Arms look really delicate here, kind of soft. Shoulders look, this person just looks very delicate right here. Again, what are the feet doing? The toes are pointing outward. What are the knees doing? The knees are pointing outward. Pelvis is being pushed forward. You know, this looks very strange. The legs are spread outward to try and change what the Q angle looks like instead of just going down straight like on a real male. Delicate looking wrists. Look at that curve. Look at the curve on the legs. See that? That is a female cue angle, but they're tilting both knees outward, both, both feet tilt outward, trying to disguise that female cue angle, but look at the width of the hips. It's equal to the shoulders, have equal shoulders and equal hips. This is a female skeleton. Curvy thighs, again. That is a female cue angle, this curve on the inside. Both sides you can rarely follow it. This person often has one hand or two hands in their pockets as well. A lot of FTMs do this to disguise the width of the hips. Again, toes pointing out. You can see the Adam's apple skull looks pretty masculine when you can't see the energy in the eyes as well. There's nothing too strange here. The uh, crotch level to wrist is about right for a male, so sometimes women have longer arms, sometimes men have shorter arms. Look at all this width here, a lot of width, curvy legs, even though it's a lean person it has quite curvy legs. Usually lean men will have a lot kind of straighter legs, but you see a lot of kind of voluptuous roundness even to a lean person. It's strange for a real male. And look at that, right below the crotch, this wide point. The widest point is the female Q angle with an acute angle coming inward. This is female hips here. This is definitely not a male. Again, toes pointing outward. This person knows what they're doing. Always be looking at what the toes are doing because the MTFs do the opposite. They turn the knees inward, and they do that to create an acute Q angle with a catwalk when they cross legs one in front of the other, but um, you know, some of these people have been trained and taught and they know what they're doing. Again, outward pointing joints here, curvy legs, those are female legs, curve on the inside as well. Interestingly, you don't see that over here. I won't go into Taylor Swift though. Taylor Swift has already been covered by other people. And here we have curve to the thighs again. Slopey shoulders. Just something very wrong. Very not male about the face. 
strange chest where it's it's kind of uh, weak because there's a small rib cage, and then suddenly there is a whole bunch of volume right at the front in the center. It's very strange. May potentially be pectoral implants. This person looks just pretty soft all around. High level of subcutaneous body fat. Not really visible bones. This is a soft female person. And look at that, just this little shrunken in FDM upper torso. The prominent waist points, the wide curvy hips. Trousers worn too low, as they often are on FDMs, because this disguises the curve of the thighs and the hips. Arms do angle outward from the shoulders in a lot of shots to accommodate hips that are wider skeletal level. Again, points where the waist comes in. The chest looks really strange. It's, it's wavy and jagged here. Very strange. Could potentially be implants or just because female pectoral muscles tend to be quite difficult to develop. Again, lots of width at the hips. Lots of width at the hips in all shots. Small upper torso. Looks very strange. Okay, so also, again, look at this kind of weird shape where the pectorals are really kind of gathered in the front. It's unusual, strange looking. The small upper body here. Then the wide hips, we can really follow where they come out looking extra wide. Just watch this person moving. Very delicate and and weak looking, willowy person. And I mean, just focus on this person. And we all know a lot of natural gender people. We know a lot of real males and real females in real life. So just ask yourself, do people exude this kind of inviting feminine glow? Do men exude this energy? Because no, men don't. Men exude a more piercing, focused, projected energy. But this is female energy. This is definitely not a man. So, Tom Hiddleston, though at a glance, could be one of the more convincing FTMs out there, is inverted. And that's that. Who would win RuPaul's Drag Race? Tom Hiddleston, Bradley Cooper, or Robert Downey Jr.? No, I'd, I'd say definitely Tom Hiddleston. Okay. Yeah. She, can, she can dress up pretty mighty <laughs> fine. <laughs>